During the 1960s, a German scientist named Joseph Weizenbaum created the very first chatbot known as Eliza. How the heck could someone create a chatbot in 1966? Did they even have computers back then? Men are all alike. In what way? How similar is OpenAI's chat GPT to the 56-year-old chatbot Eliza? Let's find out. The fascinating history of bots may be traced back all the way to the 1950s. Alan Turing, a pioneering British computer scientist who was decades ahead of his time, began pondering the question of whether or not computers are capable of thinking when he was only a teenager. And in the year 1950, he released his well-known book titled Computing Machinery and Intelligence. The core hypothesis of his publications and research was that, like people, robots are capable of thinking and possessing intelligence. According to him, a machine can be considered intelligent if it can impersonate a human and his behavior can convince the other person involved in a real-time conversation that he is interacting with a human rather than a machine. In other words, if the machine can impersonate a human and convince the other person that he's interacting with a human, then the machine is intelligent. Joseph Weizenbaum looked at the work of Alan Turing with a great deal of curiosity, and in 1966, he came up with the idea for software that would later be known as Eliza, the first ever AI chatbot. Eliza's purpose was to deceive its users into thinking that they were having a conversation with a real person. I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Eliza was created to act like a therapist by asking open-ended questions and even responding with follow-ups. This was all done in an attempt to simulate human interaction. It's generally agreed that Eliza was the first chatbot ever created in the annals of computer technology, despite the fact that the word chatbot had not been created at that time. It wasn't until 1994 that Michael Malden, the person responsible for developing the very first verbot known as Julia, came up with the word chatbot to refer to the these conversational computer programs. Eliza was able to function because it was able to recognize keywords or phrases from the input and replicate a response by employing those keywords from pre-programmed answers. For example, a person would say something like, my mother makes delicious meals. Eliza would listen for the word mother, and her response would be to offer an open-ended inquiry along the lines of, tell me more about your family. Despite the fact that the procedure was entirely mechanical, this gave the impression that the participant was comprehending and interacting with a real person. Person. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. Even though the development of bots began all the way back in 1966, the field of technology has only recently begun to recognize its significance. The employment of bots is still in its infancy. Nevertheless, there has been a recent uptick in interest, and developments in the area of artificial intelligence will undoubtedly continue to improve the experience that bots provide for their customers. When compared to applications, bots are far simpler and less expensive to create, which is another important factor in the meteoric development of bots. The majority of bots have not yet reached their destination of complete automation, and when it comes to addressing complicated or comprehensive inquiries, they still rely on human assistance. However, given the developments that are being made in the areas of natural language processing and artificial intelligence, the day won't be too far off when bots will be able to do everything on their own. Today, OpenAI's collection of artificial intelligence products include Dolly 2 for picture production and chat ChatGPT for natural language processing. ChatGPT is a model for machine learning that consumes and comprehends sequential inputs, such as text written in natural language, and functions as a transformer. It functions in a manner that is very similar to that of the human brain, with interconnected neurons that are able to learn to recognize patterns in data and generate predictions about what should happen next. Not so far from what Eliza did, or maybe. ChatGPT is trained on vast amounts of data from the internet, including conversations and it's also trained by using a machine learning technique called reinforcement, learning from human feedback, in which human trainers provide the model with conversations in which they played both the role of the AI chatbot and the user. Because of this approach to education, responses to chat GPT questions might sound as if they were written by real people. In addition, the bot is not just repeating already memorized content. According to Professor Mike Sharples, who teaches educational technology at the Open University in the UK, OpenAI's language model is building in internal representation not only at the surface text, but of the ideas and concepts underneath it. 
It was noted previously in this video, Eliza was the very first chatbot ever created. Joseph Weizenbaum developed it in 1966, and the mechanism that it uses to imitate conversation is called pattern matching and replacement methodology. The software was developed so that it could behave in a manner that was analogous to human discourse. The words that users typed into the chatbot Eliza were sent to a computer, where they were matched with pre-written replies from a premeditated list. It did this by using a screenplay that acted out the role of a psychotherapist. The script had a tremendous influence on both natural language processing and artificial intelligence, as shown by the proliferation of copies and versions of the script in educational institutions all throughout the nation. On the other hand, Weizenbaum found the response of users to be unsettling. He had every intention of Eliza being a humorous parody of human communication, but for some reason, people started telling her their deepest, darkest secrets all of a sudden. Weizenbaum's secretary fell under the spell of the machine. And I asked her to my office and sat her down at the keyboard and then she began to type. And of course, I looked over her shoulder to make sure that everything was operating properly. After two or three interchanges with, uh, with the machine, she turned to me and she said, would you mind leaving the room, please? The consensus among industry professionals was that it would only be a matter of a few years before chatbots and humans would be unable to be distinguished from one another. Weizenbaum did not believe that computers could ever achieve the same level of intelligence as humans. Instead, he contended that the technology in question was only a tool and was merely an extension of human intellect. In the decades that have passed since Weizenbaum published his concept, developers of chatbots have expanded upon it in an effort to create interactions that are more human-like. The Turing test, in which new machines' conversational abilities are put to the test in front of a panel of human judges, has become an increasingly popular objective. Additionally, in contrast to ChatGPT, the ChatGTP's language model is a big one that is trained by OpenAI, and in every respect, it is an enormous improvement over Eliza. It's intended to aid users in creating writing that is more human-like depending on the input that's provided. It's possible to utilize ChatGPT for a number of purposes, including the production of conversations and the translation of languages. Because the model is trained using an enormous quantity of data, it's able to create writing that is often impossible to differentiate from language that was written by a person. It's been said that ChatGPT is able to create text that sounds completely genuine and that it has the potential to be used in a wide range of different areas. In today's society, there's no such thing as an available Eliza. On the other hand, it's now accessible as an improved version via new chatbots such as ChatGPT and others. Thus, there's a website that replicates what Eliza did. I'll put a link in the description if you want to test it out, so you can get a feeling on how Eliza was. To sum it up, Eliza was a pioneer and a big milestone in the technology of artificial intelligence. Imagine, we didn't even have phones in 1960. Thanks for watching, and click the subscribe button for more stories about dead tech.